Hello everyone! Today's video is about how to take apart the lower frame of your Taurus G3. And to do this we need to remove the slide. So you are going to pull the slide a little bit toward the back and as we say in French, we are going to pull those à la glock little tabs on each side, lower them, let go the slide. Some people suggest to pull the trigger but you don't have to, you can just move the slide out. All right, now let's work on the lower frame. You will need a few tools and one of them is probably that grip, which is super convenient. It's like a third hand. Um, and a few other tools like the regular punch and some punch with a ball at the end. This is really what you need for the Taurus. And you will need those for other handguns. So for all this, I will leave some link for you guys on the bottom of the screen. First we need to remove the, well let me zoom on it, and we're going to start on the little tab here. This tab that allows you to free the slide. If you move it down, it frees the slide. If you move it down, as you can see right here, it moves down but you have a spring loaded tab you need to push down and then that piece needs to also go down to finally push it away. It's trickier than many many other hangings. So I'm going to use my grip here and try to show you how it comes out. First again you have to push that spring loaded tab Then you have to push down the other tab, it has to be in its lowest position, almost, and then you can try to wiggle it to move out, but it has to be, this tab has to be down and the part has to be down, everything. So I'm going to try to go from right to left, you can go from left to right, and here it is already starting to come out, so that's a plus. Last time I did it, I probably messed with it for about a couple of minutes, so I am lucky on this one. It's definitely a lot easier to put back. And it's locked in place somehow. I can keep all this down and push it. There you go. Oh, and watch out. When I release this, this is going to come flying, so you want to put your finger on. All right, let me show you the few parts. So this one was in the gun, this way. And let me grab the other part to show you how it's interlocked together. This one comes right here. So you need to get focus somewhere. There. If we push on this, this will be able to go down, but on the side here you see it's a bit taller, so it's got to pass the opening, so everything has to go down and finally you push it. If you just push it down like on a Glock and try to push it, it won't come out because the opening just come here. Anyway, if, if you do it, you will understand what I'm talking about, but that's how it needs to be done. Push this first, push this down, and then from one side or the other. All right, and we have spent enough time on this. Let's move on. Now come the really easy part. This gun is not complicated to take apart. You need to take down those three pins. You need uh, two sides. I got 332 for the larger one and a 564. That's a kit I got, works great. Again, the link will be below. All right, the bigger one for the front and you don't have to worry about anything so far. Hammer. Oh, and duct tape. Thousand and one use of duct tape. Then you let it go. Now we're going to use a smaller one. The 
The first time you remove the spin, it's a little bit harder. The second time it becomes easier, the third time and so on, it's easier. As you can see, it's not loose, it's just easier. And then the third one. And the third pin. All right, now, there is a small ball bearing you just have to watch out for, so keep a cloth or something around. But my suggestion is to pull this out a little bit and then to go underneath here and to catch on the metal port right there. And you push a little bit there. So slightly outside the plastic frame. Pull out the trigger, pull out the sear by holding down the safety this way the little the little bearing will not go fly away there you go back is done front is done that's it now this is the frame that tourists could really make others plastic different color different size you have a serial number on the bottom but that's really useless because what you care about is that little serial number that appears through the opening of the frame. So it is right there and now we are going to separate the front part of the trigger assembly which is a trigger bar attached to the sear, slightly rotate, see? It's just a, a rotation and it's out. This one went to fly away, it just goes there, no big deal. On the sear part, we're going to only deal with four parts. This one here. And then on this part, you're going to have the ball bearing. Jeez. Uh-oh, I lost it. Aha, it's right there. And this safety, the way to remove it is you move it down a little bit and then you rotate. And out you go with some wiggling. There. You put it in. And you are back into position. So we are going to remove it. And here is the last part. I'm not going to mess with it. You don't want to mess with it. You have a spring right here and you have the pin. You can definitely brush with uh, OPs, everything here, rinse it off. You do not need to go any further. No need whatsoever. And then we have the front part, and then you have a pin here. So it's really one, two, three, four, five, six parts. You want to pull out that pin right here. You shouldn't have any force to it. There, it's out. And then you remove your punch. Here comes the trigger and trigger bar. And that is as far we're gonna go. This doesn't get very dirty. And again, if, if you do feel the need to clean it, a brush, some of these, and then rinse it very well. And here is a slight catch. Also slide release, rotate, pull it out, and that little detent or spray right there, we're gonna pick it up. And here is how it goes. And that's it again. Now what I like to do, let me show you a small trick. I get my OPs to clean everything, and then I have used OPs. I pour it down my little container, let it soak, and then when this is empty, when I, I'm done building my gun, I pour it back in there. And still is usable, it's getting dirtier and dirtier, but that's okay. Because after you pull your parts out of the dirty hoppies, I put on some gloves, and then in a safe way, I'm going to spray some part cleaner. You don't want to put it on the plastic part of the trigger. It's not very good on plastic, but on metal, you spray it and it will remove all the hobbies. 
All you have to do after that is put oil or grease into the intended areas. All right, time for rebuild. We are going to start with the front of the handgun. You want that little spring to be put on first. Right above the serial number. Then, in this direction, the slide release, put it in, rotate it, make sure you hold on to the spring, and find the hole. All right. Now you want to hold it there, more or less, the hole doesn't have to be perfect. And you put your thumb on it, because you are going to insert the trigger and trigger bar. It's just a rotation. See, like this. I repeat, put it sideways and rotate. All right. Now at that point, you can start. I love to start with punches because it preset the holes. And I am on the ejector, but not on the trigger. So I need to adjust my trigger into the right point and that will ask, as I always say, some dexterity and the trigger is in. Okay, that is 99% of the work. Once you went fishing for the holes, you can finally put your pin back by pushing, but with some resistance on the punch Looks like it's not in onto the slide release, as you can probably see. So we're gonna center it, and I'm going to put some kind of a object underneath that pin to push it down while I am sure the hole is centered. So look where I put my pin on. And then I look for the center of the... There we go. Yep. Final push. And I'll flush on this side and flush on that side. All right. We are good with the front part of the frame. We have the bearing. Do not lose it. And as I said before, you haven't touched anything but those four parts. So again, the safety, put it back here with a little wiggle around. There we go. Let's put the bearing in place. If you're not too sure, a trick of the trade, you put a little bit of grease, not oil, but grease in there and it has a tendency to hold things together. So you want to go fly. Okay, so you hold the safety assembly together, and then finally, well, we'll wait on that part. We don't need it right now. We want to attach those two together. I showed you before, it is just a slide and insert. All right, the frame, where is the frame? I put the trigger assembly into the trigger guard. Try to push down the front part a little bit just for it to be into position. Then before I put the rear part, I want to reassemble this last little thingy. There we go. Now I can insert the rear. I just pushed a little bit the front, just a little bit the back. That's it. Now we are in, push everything back together, and now you can look at the holes, the three pin holes to make sure there is nothing else but a hole in it. Find your duct tape. Well, you don't even need the duct tape. Find the either or, 
one at a time, there is no order. I start with the first one, then I will start with the itty bitty one, this thinner one, and the medium sized one. And I finish it up with the pins being flush with the frame. I double check if my pins are flush. I should maybe push this one a little bit more down, maybe the other one too. But I am really done with it. So I put back this little piece right there. And this time I'm still going to use my grip. I have the spring loaded tab here. I want the narrow opening on the bottom. The insert there, you have a small insert toward the back. This one is angled, that's toward the front. And the recess area here for the back. Pushing here, watch out, do not let it go or it will go fly. Insert. As soon as you have the tab in, you, you are safe about that spring. You still need to push it, and then this is done. Okay, I am sure now I'm done with the frame. I can put in the slide. And everything is working. So that was it. Until next time, see you guys.